Hi, in this video I'm gonna show you how to use a Python library called CatBoost which is an implementation of gradient boosting by a Russian company Yandex. I'll try to explain everything in such detail that even the very beginner will catch the idea. But anyway, feel free to ask anything in the comments. Without further ado, let's dive into the code. I've already imported all required libraries. Pandas for all data manipulation, matplotlib for visualization, mean absolute error from sklearn to measure the error of our model, Cadbus regressor is basically the model that we are gonna use, and grid search CV to find the best parameters for our model. I've already prepared some data, let's read and examine it. I have two separate datasets. The first one is to train our model and the second one to test its quality. This dataset provides daily climate in the city of Delhi, India. For each date you can see three parameters, humidity, wind speed and mean pressure. The mean temperature column is our target value measured in Celsius. We have 1462 samples in the train dataset and 114 in the test dataset. Now let's transform our data a little bit. The first step is to convert the type of the date column from object to date time. It's simple to do with a pandas method called toDateTime. Additionally, I want to generate a couple of new features. First, the weather depends on the month. So I assume that it would be helpful for our model to add the month column. Also, I will add day of year and quarter, which are typical enough for time series for casting problems. I'm going to use only these three features without the original three features. I'll explain why later. While there are some other features you can come up with, let's stop here for our baseline. Also notice that I'm ignoring the date column, because its values are all unique, therefore it's useless for predictions. So this function returns a pair of x and y, where x is a dataset without a target column and y is a target column. Let's call this function twice to prepare our data. Looks like we've done all correctly, and here we have three different columns, month, quarter and day of year. We are approaching the training process, which is pretty simple. Here I have a dictionary of values for some parameters, depth, learning rate and n estimators. And I'm gonna use grid search CV, which basically creates models with all possible combinations of these parameters to find the best one. Uh, by the way, when silent equals true is set, the algorithm runs without printing intermediate information, progress updates or other details. And basically all we need to do now is to fit our model. As you can see, it took approximately 6 seconds, which is pretty cool, especially if you compare the speed with, for example, XGBoost. It is a real advantage of CatBoost library because it is really rapid. And let's display the best parameters. Depth 4, 40 and estimators and learning rate equals 0 0.1. It's time for predictions. Here I am predicting values for both the training and test data because it's important to avoid overfitting if you achieve a high score on your training dataset, but before much worse on your test dataset, then your model is too complicated and you need to tweak some parameters. Let's compute the mean absolute error for our predictions. As we can see, the difference isn't tremendous. The result is quite good. Let's visualize the predictions for better readability. These are our predictions on the train dataset and they actually look good. In general, the model follows the trend. The same holds true for our test dataset. By using the get feature importance method, you can identify which features are important to your model and which are less. As we can see, day of wear is the most important feature for our model. 
Last question to answer is how to predict the future. Up until this very moment, we've been forecasting the weather for the past, which doesn't seem useful at all. Let me show you how to predict the weather in the city of Delhi for the next three days, for example. Here I set a date range specifying its first and last day. Afterward, I create a data frame with this date range and pass it to the preprocess function. It becomes clear why I dropped all features like humidity and wind speed because we basically don't know these values for the future. Now let's predict the future and compare it with the actual situation in Delhi. Actually, the predictions are very good because we are predicting the mean temperature during the day, whereas on the screen you see the maximum and minimum values for the day, so the actual difference is not that high. That's basically it for today's video. Here I put some insights on how to improve this model. In summary, find more historical data, tweak model parameters and generate more features. You can find this code in the description. If you found this helpful, like the video and subscribe to my channel for more content on data science and machine learning. See you in the next videos.